Welcome to DOS Days, a nostalgic look back at PC gaming from the mid 80s to mid 90s. This is a companion piece series to Player One Memories which covers the arcade scene during this same period. For this series I'll be jumping back and looking at all those great DOS era and early CD-ROM titles that I played and loved so much, as well as the times and places I experienced them. So let's jump on back to 1993 which saw the last of the official Commodore retail games trickle out the door. Luckily I still had my C64 and was able to enjoy the sublime platform masterpiece that was Mayhem in Monsterland. Yay 8-bit. On the TV front we saw the debut of Star Trek Deep Space Nine which bucked the trend of the franchise by introducing ongoing storylines and characters as opposed to Trek's usual self-contained episodes. Take a sip of this. What is it? A human drink. It's called root beer. Uh, I don't know. Come on. Aren't you just a little bit curious? <sighs> what do you think? It's fire! It still remains my favorite Trek series of all time. On the movie front, I got to see the totally underappreciated late Joel Schumacher masterpiece, Falling Down, which gave us Michael Douglas at his career best. How about you, son? Is it good? And you, ma'am? How's the food? Seriously, watch this movie if you haven't already. And on the music front, we got Break It Down Again by Tears For Fears, which is without a doubt their least known song, but it's still an absolutely fantastic tune worth taking a listen to. And now let's jump on over to today's game, which is Gabriel Knight's Sins of the Fathers, released by Sierra in 1993. The game was created by Jane Jensen, who was a bit of a veteran at Sierra at that point, having worked on not only this, but Police Quest 3 and King's Quest 6, and various other Sierra classics. This was her first game she had total control over, writer, designer, and director. The game itself is a point and click adventure game, which is what Sierra did best, except this one had a much darker, more mature tone. With its story about horror novelist Gabriel doing investigations into a series of voodoo related murders in New Orleans for his latest book. The game's structure is the whole story takes place over a few days and by completing certain story criteria will lead you to the next day, in a similar vein to the Tex Murphy adventure games. The gameplay is a mix of traditional point and click puzzles and interrogating people for information which leads to new locations and more puzzles. It features all the usual icons for its gameplay mechanics like look, talk, open, close, etc, etc. So if you've played any game in the genre before, you'll be right at home. I've got some things I need to do. Don't hurry back on my account. The story is definitely the highlight, as are the characters, all being very likeable and intriguing, with a story that's pretty mature in nature and doesn't shy away from going down the rabbit hole real deep, and is not only restricted to the city of New Orleans, but goes globetrotting to Germany and Africa later as the story unfolds. The atmosphere in this game is brought to life brilliantly with the excellent voice cast for all the characters, including Tim Curry as Gabriel, who despite the fact that his accent slips into Congo, what the hell is that territory ever once in a while. Herkema Homolka, formerly of Romania, free now of the chains of Ceausescu, traveling the world doing good does a great job, as does Leah Remini as his assistant, Grace, who adds a lot of good sass to the character. What can I say? I refuse to be bound by rules. The strap marks on your bedpost speak otherwise. We also get other veterans like Mark Hamill and Michael Dorn to round out the brilliant list of casting. Just like any good movie, Gabriel draws you in and the story unfolds with more and more intrigue as the investigation continues and is paced really well with each interrogation and piece of information learned leading to new opportunities. Very rarely did I get stuck in this game, unlike other offerings in this genre. It's got a couple of dodgy puzzles just like all these games, but mostly the story keeps keeps going, and thus your attention is kept. Here's what Jane had to say about it. But as a writer, when I came here, I kind of got inspired thinking about how far this medium could go. 
the sphere was already at that point changing a lot of its direction. And I feel very strongly that this medium can be as powerful of entertainment as any film or any book or any, you know, comic or whatever medium you have. And I don't think that, um, I try not to limit my thinking about the powerful nature of the story because it's a computer game. I think that we can make computer games that are just as good as any other form of, of entertainment. The graphics and animation are really good and the darker more macabre vibe definitely shines through and adds a great sense of dread. The music and voiceovers as mentioned are top quality stuff and only add to the looming atmosphere which draws more dim and weird with every interrogation. The game was followed by two sequels, The Beast Within and Blood of the Sacred, Blood of the Damned with each entry being in a new style of adventure presentation. This one being the traditional point and click, The Beast Within employing 90s FMV tropes and Blood of the Sacred jumping into the 3D polygon style. Jane later said in an interview that the game was inspired by the Alan Parker movie Angel Heart, which is a great movie by the way, so definitely check that out. She also said, One of the great things about Sierra was that Ken Williams really believed in the artistic vision. If he gave you the chance to do a game, that was your responsibility. Nobody told you what to do with it. If it didn't sell well, then you wouldn't do another game for him, but he would let you have that freedom. The game fortunately was a big hit and Jane had her freedom to make her trilogy. With Computer Gaming World in a review in 1993 saying, Gabriel Knight is an exceptional blend of art, game and understanding. It's mature audiences for all the right reasons. If you want to play the entire trilogy, it's available on GOG, good old games, for really cheap, as is 2014's 20th anniversary remake, which was headed up by Jane Jensen herself. So why not fire this up and jump down that dark hole and experience a mysterious but completely fascinating adventure you won't soon forget. Game over. And thanks for joining me, Bastish B at 64K. If you can like and subscribe, that would be greatly appreciated, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.